À l'aube, sur l'île caribéenne de Curaçao, des scientifiques, explorateurs et membres d'équipage montent à bord du navire de recherche Hervé Chapman en vue d'une expédition scientifique dans les profondeurs de l'océan. Le Chapman démarre avec à son bord un explorateur sponsor et des spécialistes des coraux, poissons et éponges. La destination, Klein Curaçao, est plate, déserte et inhabitée. Mais l'océan qui l'entoure cache de nombreux secrets. Le but de cette expédition Explorer les récifs de ces profondeurs. Je suis un research scientist qui spécialise en coral reefs et coral reef ecology. Corals are like the trees in a forest. They really provide all the habitat that the animals live in. Associated with coral reefs are potentially up to over a million species of organisms. They're incredibly important for the oceans, but also very important for people all around the world. When most people think of coral reefs, they imagine colorful and extensive reefs in Australia, the Great Barrier Reef. But the deep reef ecosystems are a great unknown and really the cutting edge of coral reef research at the moment. Shallow coral reef ecosystems were known to be followed in depth by something called the mesophotic zone. Meso means mid, photic means light, so mid-light zone. And that was thought to go to about 150 meters, roughly 500 feet, and defined as still having enough sunlight for photosynthesis so that you can have reef building corals. And we were able to identify a new tropical reef zone below the mesophotic, uh, which we named the rarephotic. Uh, rare is scarce, so scarce light. And there had been very little study done below the mesophotic in tropical regions. We're really interested to know if any of the species from the shallow reefs live down deeper. We also want to learn more about how these deeper reefs deal with climate change, pollution, and overfishing. See if they're more or less sensitive to shallow reefs to try to get a better idea how we can protect this really unique and important ecosystem. Pour mener à bien cette mission, les scientifiques disposent du Curaçub, un sous-marin à la pointe de la technologie pouvant transporter jusqu'à 5 personnes à une profondeur de 300 mètres. Together with Bruce, we've been piloting uh, from the beginning with uh, with the Curaçub, so since 2010. We've made a little over 2,000 dives. A lot of people ask me, a lot of passengers, like, uh, is it still fun? Do you still like it, you know, after so many dives? Because they can imagine, like, it's the same all over, but it's not. We see new things, and also the passengers themselves make it very interesting, especially with the research runs. It's one thing where we learn a lot also about what's going on at those steps. Okay, but I didn't get any of Vamos a ver. Ya van a salir. Ya van a salir. Ya yeah, es la misma. Ya es la misma. Ya es la Ya es la misma. 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 Ya es la misma
my role in this expedition is really to be a link between uh, the world of science and the uh, general public. I'm a curious guy by nature and we are combining this personal curiosity and trying to bring it beyond what's interesting and good for me and exciting for me and trying to uh, bring this to the, uh, to the outside world uh, as well. Another parallel. Okay. All right. So this is a new species of sea bass, and it belongs to a genus named Baldwinella, which was named after me. So it's pretty cool. I get to describe a new species. Uh, of a genus that has my species, name. species, you mean it's been discovered recently? We or? discovered it subdiving off Curacao, yeah. and uh, um, but this is the first specimen from Klein Curacao, so we, we'll, it'll be part of the original description of the new species. Beautiful, huh? My own specific mission is to explore the fish and invertebrate biodiversity that inhabits deep reefs. These are very poorly studied ecosystems around the ocean. We're really looking at what I call no man's land, you know, an area that science has largely missed. The Curasub is well equipped for scientific study, particularly for collecting organisms. Um, it's got two robotic arms, one has a suction tube, so when we find something small that we want to collect, we simply bring that tube down and turn the suction on and up it goes. Oh, I see my goby swimming around in here. For the fish species that I work on, they tend to need a little incentive before they'll go up that tube, so we can spray them with a little anesthetic called quinaldine. It just makes them sleepy, it doesn't kill them, and um, then we can collect them that way. Whenever we see bottles that have been discarded and landed on the bottom of the ocean, we pick them up. And that's because they're often chock full of shells. They're kind of like artificial reefs. There are a lot of uh, animals crawl in or attached on the outside, and they're very easy for us to collect and discover a lot of new life that way. The first ones they made were 1780 up to 1850. And in which country? What? In which country did they They made them in England, they made them in Holland. Okay. But I'm just getting some of the animals off that are using the glass bottle as a substrate. So there are some really nice hey, look. solitary hey, look. corals on it. So uh, that is quite nice. Oh yeah. I'm here to look at the biodiversity of sponges in the deeper reef zones because we don't know so much about this specific zone. We do know that sponges are becoming more abundant in the Caribbean reefs. So they're actually threatened coral reefs. I have several different interests. So one is, is the biodiversity of this specific reef zone. And second, I look at bacterial communities inhabiting sponges because sponges harbor an enormous diversity of these bacteria. And sponges are also responsible for nutrient recycling and for producing very interesting bioactive compounds which can be used as pharmaceuticals for, for people. La recherche vise également l'étude du récif peu profond, sa santé et sa diversité. En plus de la plongée sous-marine, un véhicule télécommandé est déployé pour filmer les zones moins accessibles. Mais pour atteindre les objectifs qu'elle s'est fixés, l'équipe doit retourner en profondeur. Ok, top side, la commission de submerge. From previous work on the main island of Curacao, they found corals going all the way down to 100 meters. So we're really trying to focus in and, and see if there are any reefs that deep. Okay, here 
comes life support. Cabin pressure is equal. Oxygen 20 decimal zero. Line pressure 110. HP 22. Mains 251. Intermittent GFM. No water lines. It's interesting that intermittently there are these like barren deserts with yeah, almost right? nothing. Yeah. Can we check this out? Sure. Out of the desert, there's finally some some life. <laughs> Yeah, this is the spot, and then this is all several species of corals. Yeah, I think you're close to position. Yeah, copy that. Yeah, we're finding some coral here. Okay, okay. I haven't seen that species yet. So that's, that's a really beautiful one. And then there's another orbicella just above it. This expedition was very successful. We were able to find deep reefs going down to about 80 meters in Klein Curacao, but really it's the tip of the iceberg. Now that we know that the corals are there, there's many more years of research that we can do to really start to understand how these reefs function. These science expeditions really open a lot of doors for developing new projects that can be done in the mesophotic and deep reefs. In the shallow reefs, there's been a lot of work in Curacao looking at reef restoration to replant endangered coral species onto the reef. I'm really excited to see how successful they're going to be and if we may be able to protect deeper reefs in a similar way. Thank you.